Bye. <laughs> this is chemistry. Take some notes. Have fun. Party hard. Okay, that was Delaney if you guys were wondering. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about wave calculations. This is where it gets a little more complicated. So please be following along with your guided notes. Make sure you have a calculator out. You're going to need a calculator. And we're going to do some calculations with waves. So I wanted to first start this video with, with this slide. How fast does light travel, guys? Light travels really fast. In fact, there's nothing that goes faster than light. We call it the speed of light, right? So all light, doesn't matter what color it is, all light travels at the same speed and it's called the speed of light. Right, Josh? Yeah. And the speed of light is given this symbol, lowercase c. So if you see that, that means the speed of light. And it's equal to this magnitude. So it's equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So if you can imagine a meter, a meter is, you know, so long. And it's going 3 times 10 to the 8th. What is that, guys? 3.0 times 10 to the 8th. Well, let's see if we got enough zeros here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if the decimal is right there, then this becomes thousands. Um, 1, 2, 3 more. That's 300 million meters in one second. 300 million of those. So it's obviously very fast speed. Um, and all light, doesn't matter what color it is, travels at that speed. Okay, so here's an equation that we're going to use today. C, what does C mean, guys? Speed of light. Speed of light. Is equal to, what is this symbol right here? What's it called? Wavelength. 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 What's the name of the symbol, though? Lambda. Lambda. And times, what does V stand for? Frequency. Frequency. So wavelength times frequency is equal to the speed of light. Guys, will you always have what C equals? 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we're going to do some calculations with waves today to figure out the wavelength, the frequency, and the speed. Okay. Uh, why are we talking about waves again, guys? Why are we talking about waves? Because light travels through the air as a wave. And why are we talking about it in this chapter? Because electrons are what emit light. Good. So we've got to learn about waves. That's why we're doing this. Because electrons produce light and light travels through the air as a wave. Okay, wave calculations. We're, we're going to learn how to calculate the wavelength, frequency, and energy of waves. We're going to use these equations. I think you have to write them down, right? Yeah. yeah. So take a second and fill out the wave equations, one, two, and three. And I would also like you to write down these constants. C is a constant. The speed of light is constant. It's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And H is another constant. We'll talk about it in a second, but also write those down. Okay, so let's talk about these equations, guys. I'm going to point to a variable, and you're going to tell me what it means. What does C mean? Speed, Speed of light. Do we know it? Yes. Yeah, it's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we always know what C is. It's a constant. What is this symbol? Uh, wave Lambda, and it means wavelength. What is this one? Frequency. Frequency. What is E? Energy. Energy is equal to H. Now, H is a new one. It's called Planck's constant. It's equal to this huge number down here. Well, it's actually a really small number. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. That's a very small number, okay? So energy of a wave is equal to Planck's constant times what? Frequency. frequency. So if we know the frequency of a wave, can we determine its energy? Yeah, we just times it by Planck's constant. Okay, number three. What is this, guys? Energy is equal to Planck's constant times speed of light divided by wavelength, right? Yeah. Okay, we've got to know those three equations. I will always give them to you. I don't expect you to memorize them, 
But what I do expect is that you're able to use them to determine either the wavelength, the frequency, or the energy of waves. Okay, let me show you how this works. As frequency goes up, if this number got bigger, what would happen to the energy? Yeah, if you times by a larger number, don't you get a bigger energy? See that, guys? Mathematically, you see how that works? If this number gets smaller, what's going to happen to energy? It gets smaller. So as frequency goes down, energy does also. That's a direct relationship. Now, because we're dividing by wavelength here, as you divide by a larger number, so if the wave has a longer wavelength, what's going to happen to energy? If you divide by a larger number, it gets smaller. Okay, do you see how that works? What if the wavelength got smaller? What if you divide now by a smaller number? Energy is going to get bigger there. Okay. So a uh, little bit about uh, those equations. We're going to use them. Okay, practice problem number eight. It says microwaves. Microwaves, guys, is just a form of light that our eyes can't see. So the, the waves are too small for our eyes to see, but it really is just like light. Microwaves are used to cook food and transmit information. What is the wavelength of a microwave that has the frequency of 3.44 times 10 to the 9 hertz? Okay, I want you to underline what it gives us. It gave us frequency, so underline that. I want you to circle what it's asking for. What is it asking us? Yeah, what is the wavelength? So I want you to circle that. Is there an equation, one, two, or three, that, that we could use to figure out wavelength? What about number one? C is equal to what, guys? Wavelength times frequency. Do we have C? Yeah, well, let's plug it in. What is it? 3 times 10 to the 8 is equal to... Okay, is equal to lambda. What's, do we know wavelength? I don't know what that is. Do we know wavelength? No. Call it x, call it whatever you want. I'm going to keep it as lambda because that means wavelength. Times, what's the frequency? Yeah, it gave it to us. 3.44. Can I put e? Do you guys know what that means? E to the ninth hertz. Okay. So if you were going to use your algebra skills here, how would you get lambda by itself? Divide by 3.44 e to the ninth. But if you do it to one side, do you have to do it to the other side? Yeah. Yes, it's what an equation means. It's equals means whatever you do to one side, you've got to do it to the other side. It's equal. So 3.44 e to the ninth comes down here. The reason we did that, what's 3.44 e to the ninth divided by itself? One. It's 1. It's 1, so I can cancel it out. So lambda, guys, stay with me. Somebody do this in your calculator. 3e to the 8 divided by 3.44 10. And can you do that? Uh, e to the 9. <laughs> All right, I need somebody to verify. 0.0872. OK, thank you, Mitch. 3e to the 8 divided by 3.44 E, do, do you know where the big E button is? Yeah. You have to hit the second function and that X and minus 1. Good. I'm getting this. Lambda is equal to 0 0.087. And what is wavelength measured in? What are the units? Length. It's measured in what? Meters. Meters. I need you to put the units as well. You will miss it if you don't put units. Friendly, did you get that? Yeah. That's what you got too? What? That's what you got too? Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, because that is right. So this is a wavelength of a microwave. Are they very big? No. 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 Only eight centimeters. Okay. Oh no no. Yeah, about eight centimeters, so. Meters to center, yeah. Okay, so very small wavelength. Okay, number nine. Let's try this one. 
Okay, it says objects get their color from reflecting only certain wavelengths when hit with white light. Guys, what color of light is coming from the sun? White. Okay. Why is why is this sweater that I'm wearing black? Is it really black light? Or is black the absence of light? So this sweater is black because it's absorbing all light. So it looks black to us. But why is, uh, why is, um, okay, let's, let's go, why is Sydney's hoodie, why is Sydney's hoodie red? Because it's absorbing what? Everything but red. So it's absorbing, you know, all the blues, the greens, the yellows, and whatever. And it's reflecting red light. So that's why we see it as red, right? You guys see how that works? Or what about Hayden? Why is his hoodie blue? It's reflecting blue. It's absorbing all other light. Okay? So, hey, let's stay with me. Stay with me. Objects get their color from reflecting only certain wavelengths when hit with white light. Light reflected from green leaf is found to have a wavelength. Okay, I want you to underline this. Wavelength of 4.9 times 10 to the minus seventh meters. What is the frequency of the light? So we're circling what? Frequency. What is the frequency of the light? Now is there an equation, one, two, or three, that has Frequency and wavelength in it? Yeah. Which one is it? Yeah. C is equal to wavelength times frequency. Plug in your variables. See if you can tell me what the frequency is. I'm going to do it on the board, but don't look up until you've got an answer. Okay, so hopefully you followed along there. We're solving for, in this case, frequency. So we've got, we've got to rearrange it, try to get frequency by itself. You divide it by the wavelength, both sides. It cancels out on the right side here. So if you put in your calculator 3e e to the 8 divided by 4.9e e to the minus 7, you're going to get this number for frequency. Guys, is that a pretty large number or a very small number? This is a huge number, times 10 to the 14th. That means move the decimal over 14 times this way. That's a lot of waves per second. So green, this would represent a green light. That's what's coming off the leaf. Okay, very good. And did we get it right, guys? Yes. Okay, practice problem number 10. X-rays, did you know that X-rays are just a form of light? We just can't see them, our eyes just don't pick it up. It's, it's too small of a wavelength. So x-rays can penetrate body tissue and are widely used in di to diagnose and treat disorders of internal body structures. So our bones don't let it pass through, but our soft tissue does, so it can give you a good picture of different structures inside the body. What is the frequency of an x-ray with the wavelength of 1.15 times 10 to the minus 10? meters. I want you to underline what it gives us. It gave us wavelength. Circle, what is it asking for? It's asking to find frequency. Of those three equations that we talked about, one, two, or three, which one could we use? Number one again. 
C is equal to what, guys? Good. Wavelength times frequency. Plug them in. See if you can get it right. Hey, does speed of light ever change? No, it's always the same. 3 e to the 8th. It gave us wavelength. And we're supposed to find frequency. Help me out. Um, let's go to Eli. To get frequency by itself, what would I have to do? Good. I like it. Just one side or both sides? Yeah, it's an equation. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. 1.15e to the minus 10. Over here, it cancels out because anything divided by itself is 1. That's exactly why we divided it by that, so we could get it to cancel out. So frequency is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.15e to the minus 10. Put that in your calculator. See if you can get the same answer I'm going to get. Are you guys getting this number? 2.61 times 10 to the 18? Yeah, I rounded to two decimal places here. Guys, what's the uh, units for frequency? Hertz, you abbreviate it with HZ. Is that a lot of waves? Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to stop right now and go back to that previous problem. Look at that previous problem. It gave us the frequency for, for green, for green light. The frequency for green light is times 10 to the 14. Look at what the frequency is of an x-ray times 10 to the 18. So how many orders of magnitude more is an x-ray than green leaf? Four orders of magnitude. That's a, that's a lot, right? Every order of magnitude is another zero. So, um, so one point, that would be one, two, three, four. That would be 10,000 times more waves per second in an x-ray than it is for green light. So they're very, very high frequency. So do they have more energy? Yes. Yeah, and that's why they can go through our body and green light can't. That's why when you go to the doctor, when you break your arm, they give you an x-ray. That's why they use x-rays instead of just normal light. So what color is green? What color of light is it? Well, we can't see it anyway, so what difference would it make? Well, that's, that's an impossible question, I think, to, to answer because we can't see it. No, if we could see it, then we don't Yeah, yeah, it's one of those questions, right? Okay. But it, it, it is interesting to think about, right? If we could see it, I don't know what color it would be. Maybe it would be a new color, right? D. I'm sure it's not going to match any color that we currently see. So, yeah, good question, but uh, we can't answer it. Did we get that one, that one right? Yes, we did. Okay. Oh, let's see if we can get through this. Okay, I've got a few more slides. Can you guys handle a few more slides? Okay, let's 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 press on then. Okay, the particle nature of light, guys. Some interesting thing about light is uh, it's really not fully understood even today, but. It acts like a wave going through the air, but it also acts as a particle, like a, like a physical particle, except it doesn't have any mass. So light is still really kind of, it's not fully understood. So we're going to talk about the other nature of light, the particle nature, not the wave nature, but the particle. Albert Einstein proposed that in 1905 that light has a dual nature. So Einstein said light has a dual nature. Dual means two, right? A beam of light has a wave-like property, and it also has a particle-like property. So light behaves like a wave and a particle. Well, when it's a particle, we call it a photon. A photon is a particle of light with no mass 
that carries a quantum of energy. So a photon is a particle of light with no mass and carries with it a quantum of energy, a certain amount of energy. Think about this word photon, guys. It's kind of the, the, the prefix for a lot of words. What are, what are some other words that start with photon? What about a photograph? What's a photograph, guys? It's a picture that captures all of the light at that moment in time, right? So it's coming from photon, because it's capturing light, and that's what photon is. What about a photographer? What do they do? They take pictures and capture light. So that's why they're called photographers. They capture photons. Wait, did I say it backwards, Will? Oh. Okay, Will, does that make sense? Photon, it's a particle of light. Okay. We're going to use this equation down here, energy of a photon. The energy of a photon is equal to H times V. H is what again? Planck's constant. And what is V? Frequency. So if frequency goes up, what's going to happen to energy? It's going to go up. What if frequency goes down? Energy is going to go down. Okay. And Planck's constant H will always be given to you. It's that really, really small number. Um, but we'll give it to you. Okay. Energy related to wavelength with a different equation. Remember, as wavelength gets shorter, energy gets larger. Energy is related to wavelength in the following equation. Okay? So if we want to find energy and it gives us wavelength, we're going to use this equation. I'm going to point to these variables, guys. I want you to tell me what it means. What is E? Energy. energy. What is H? Planck's constant. Planck's constant. What is C? Speed of light. light. And what's? That's, that means wavelength. Good job. So if it gives us wavelength, guys, if they give us wavelength, can I calculate how much energy it has? Yeah. Yeah. What if wavelength gets larger? What's going to happen to energy? It's going to get smaller because you're dividing by a larger number, right? It's got to get smaller. Okay, practice problem number 11. I've got two more practice problems and then we're done. You guys make it? Yeah. Okay, number 11. Every object gets its color by reflecting a certain portion of incident light. The color is determined by the wavelength of the reflected photons, thus by their energy. What is the energy of a photon from a violet portion of the sun's light if it has a frequency, I want you to underline this, they're giving us frequency of 7.23 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Use this formula, E equals HV. Okay, let's set it up. E is equal to HV. What is it asking us to find, guys? What is the energy? Yeah, it's for the circle that one. Okay, so it doesn't give us energy, so I'm going to keep it as E. What is H? Six point six two six times ten to the minus thirty four. Do you have to memorize that? No. No, but you're going to use it a lot, so you might end up memorizing it. But I'll always give it to you. Okay. On a on a test, I would give it to you. And what is V? Did it tell us? Yes. Seven point two three times ten to the fourteen. Okay. If you times those two numbers together, it tells us energy. So take a second in your calculator and see if you can get a number. Remember, Planck's constant is, is, a, is a negative 34 right there. Uh, leave it on your calculator. I'm going to come around and see if you can get this. So if you're just kind of laying back, letting other people do it, I'm going to catch you. I want to see it on your calculator. Good question, guys. 
When you get an answer, what's the units for energy? Joules. How do you how do you abbreviate joules? J. Capital J. Okay. Look up here, guys. How many of you guys got that it's 4.79 times 10 to the minus 19th joules? Yeah. Raise your hand if you got it. Okay, good. Is this a very large or a very small number if it's minus 19? Very small. Is there very much energy in one photon of light? No, no one photon is not that much. So that makes sense. Okay? I told you I'm coming around, so here I go. Okay, let's go to practice problem number 12. Okay, stay with me. It says the blue color of some fireworks. <laughs> That's how fireworks get their color. They put in different elements of, it makes different colors. The blue color in some fireworks occurs when copper one chloride is heated to approximately 1500 degrees Kelvin and emitted to blue light. It has a wavelength. So underline wavelength, 450 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. How much energy does one photon of this light carry? Use this equation. So energy is equal to hc over lambda. Okay, now I'm just going to plug in stuff that we know. Do we know energy? No. no. Do I know h? Yeah. What is it, guys? Thank you, Coleman. Very good. Okay, what's C? Speed of light. Speed of light, what does it equal though? Uh, 3 times 10 to the 8. Good. Divided by, what's the wavelength of this blue light? One, one. Isn't it 450 times 10 to the yeah. minus 9? Okay. Put that in your calculator, see if you can get the same number that I'm about to get. Uh, be careful, it says 450, so this isn't 4.5, it's 450. E to the minus 9. Okay, are you guys getting this? How many of you got that? Okay, good job. Again, very much energy or very small? Very, very small, but it's only one photon. I wanted to go back. This was blue light times 10 to the minus 19. Also, what color was this one, the one before? Violet. Violet is also very close to that times 10 to the minus 19. So, guys, wave calculations. Can we do those? Okay, I will always give you those equations. What does C equal? Speed, Speed of light. light. 3 times 10 to the 8. What does H equal? Planck's constant. And I will always give that to you. Okay, guys, you now know enough to do a worksheet. Hold on, hold on. You now, you now know enough to do a worksheet in your student workbook. I would like you to go to... Let me see what it's called. Yeah, it's called Wavelength, Frequency, and Energy of Waves Worksheet, and complete that one. Hopefully this helps.